Hi everyone, welcome to episode 6. So today we're going to be looking at moving platforms, which is um, a pretty tricky topic actually. But uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up before we began programming is what should happen in a scenario where we've actually got the player sandwiched between a surface and the moving platform. So obviously there are a number of things we could do. We could have the platform sort of be blocked by the player so it can't move anymore. Or um, we could have the, the platform actually squash the player, which I did a little demo of just for fun. It looks quite funny. But um, that might not look so good if you've got an actual character sprite. It, it might look a bit strange. Or of course you could design your level so that uh, such a situation never arises just by you know, being more careful about where you place the platforms. Um, but just for the sake of simplicity, uh, in this tutorial, we're just going to make it so that the platform sort of goes through the player, and then you can just sort of jump up to get on top of it. So obviously, if you're interested in any of the other implementations, you're welcome to sort of try implement it yourself. And if you get stuck, just leave a comment and I'll give you some sort of tips. Um, but for now, this is the approach we're going to take. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so to begin with, let's create a new c -sharp script for controlling our platforms. And I'm going to call this the platform controller. Um, now we want our, our moving platforms to be able to do their own collision detection, which means more raycasts. Um, but our controller to d script has got a lot of useful raycast stuff, like this raycast origin struct, the calculate ray spacing and update raycast origins method. Uh, that's all stuff that we want for our platformer controller as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create yet another script, uh, which we can call something like the uh, raycast controller, and then both the controller 2D and the platformer script can extend from that so that they share that sort of common uh, functionality. So let's create a new C-sharp script now called Raycast Controller. And if we just open that up, we can begin cutting out all of the sort of uh, general Raycast stuff and just paste it into the Raycast Controller. Uh, we're going to want to copy over all the associated variables as well. Um, like the raycast origins, the collider, and the horizontal and vertical ray spacing. Um, just going to put that over here so I can copy all of this at once. And just paste this in at the top here. Um, we're also going to want to require the box collider in the raycast controller script, since that is where the variable is. And finally, let's... Uh, Copy over the start method as well. All right. And in the controller 2D script, let's just tidy up, uh, get rid of some of this white space. OK. Um, now you can see all of these things are red since it no longer has access to them. So first thing we need to do is we need to extend the Raycast controller. OK. And now we can save. Um, but we also need to make all of these public so that, it, that the uh, derived script has got access to it. So this could do write public here and just copy that and just paste it in front of all of these variables here. Do the same thing for the methods as well and the struct. But um, we don't necessarily want things like horizontal and vertical ray spacing to appear in the inspector, since these are of course being calculated in the calculate ray spacing method. So uh, we can add a little attribute called hide an inspector, which, well, it does exactly what it says it does. It hides the variable in the inspector and just uh, give one of these, these attributes to each of these variables here. And uh, we also, because start method is something that we might want in our derived classes, like the controller 2D and the, um, the platformer controller, we're going to make it a public virtual void and what that allows us to do is, um, in the controller 2 d script, if we were to just say void start, um, that would now completely overwrite the start method and never get called, so our collider would never be set. Um, but when we make it virtual, we can basically extend it by saying public override void start, and then we can call base.start at the beginning. So here, when this start method is called, 
it will call the uh, the raycast controller's start method and then it will continue on with its own start method so that way we can have a start method in both our raycast controller and any of its derived classes all right so let's open up the platform controller script and uh, this also extends the raycast controller script and for the start method let's let's make that a public override void and call base.start and uh, just to be able to move this around uh, let's create a public vector 3 called move and in the update method we can create a new vector 3 called our velocity which is just going to be equal to move multiplied by time dot delta time and then we can just say transform dot translate by the velocity and uh, this is just a nice way to move it around um, in the inspector uh, let's just duplicate this uh, obstacle scale it down a bit on the x-axis and uh, can apply a platform controller script to that and I'm going to call this moving platform so now if we go into play mode um, we can test our platform just by fiddling with these values in the inspector uh, so that's quite nice all right let's go back into the platform controller script and let's create a new void called move passengers and that takes in a vector 3 velocity so passengers is referring to any controller 2d that is uh, sort of being affected by the platform whether it's standing on it or below it or to the side of it and being sort of pushed horizontally anything that's being moved by the platform i'm going to call a passenger so to start off with let's get our Direction x, this is equal to the sine of velocity dot x, and let's do the same thing for direction y, it's equal to the sine of velocity dot y. Alright, now let's consider the different cases individually. So the first case will be a vertically moving platform. So I'll just add a note there, and we'll say if velocity dot y is not equal to zero then we have a vertically moving platform all right now a lot of the raycast stuff we're going to do here is going to be pretty similar to what we have in the controller 2d script so let's find our vertical collisions and just from ray length i'm just going to copy down here to the uh, to where we assign to the raycast hit 2d variable i'm just going to paste that all in here now let's go through this and see what we need to change. So the ray length stays the same, that's good. Um, the ray origin, so far so good. Um, I want to remove the velocity.x from this. I'll just delete that. And otherwise it's all fine, except um, here we're moving passengers. We're not really detecting uh, sort of collisions that will actually stop the... Uh, stop the platform from moving so I'm rather going to create a new layer mask called the passenger mask and I'll just use that instead for the raycast now we can say if hit in other words we've found a passenger and then we want to figure out how far to actually move the passenger so obviously we can't simply move it by the uh, by the platform's velocity since then uh, there might be a sort of little gap between the passenger and the edge of the platform so what we rather need to do is uh, sort of first let the gap between the passenger and the platform be closed and only move it by the rest of the velocity um, just quickly I'm missing a bracket here um, so let's create a float called push y and uh, this is going to be equal to our platform's velocity on the y-axis and then we're going to subtract the hit dot distance in other words the uh, 
the distance between the platform and the passenger to sort of close that gap. And we're going to subtract skin width uh, for the same reasons as always, just because uh, we're casting our rays from skin width inside of the collider. And then obviously we just need to multiply this all by direction y. All right, now for the push x. So um, this is for the case of vertically moving platforms. So obviously this is only going to come into effect if the, uh, if the platform has actually got some x velocity. So it's in fact moving diagonally. But the way I see it, the passenger should only be affected by the x velocity if it's actually standing on the platform. If it's, say, sort of below the platform and being pushed downwards, um, then we don't really want it to be affected by the x velocity. So we'll say if direction uh, y is equal to 1, in other words, the platform is moving up, then push x can be equal to velocity.x, otherwise we just want to set it equal to 0. All right, and finally we can just uh, move the passenger by saying hit.transform.translate, new vector 3, push x, and push y. All right. So now to test this, um, in the update method, we're first of all going to want to call update raycast origins. And then before we call transform.translate on the platform, we're going to want to say move passengers by velocity. Now one thing to be aware of is that we are casting multiple rays out, which means that a single passenger could be hit multiple times and thus actually be moved multiple times in a single frame, which is obviously not something we want. So um, we can't just stop ray casting after we hit the first passenger, since if it's a multiplayer game or if there are AI units, then there could be more than one passenger uh, on, the, on the platform. So we are going to say using systems.collections.generic, and this allows us to create a hash set and in this hash set, we're going to store all of the passengers that we've already moved this frame. So I'm going to call this the moved passengers. It's equal to a new hash set of transforms. Now, the reason we use a hash set is because they're particularly fast at adding things and checking if they contain a certain thing. So um, each time that we hit something, we'll say, if the moved passengers does not contain hit.transform, only then will we actually move that transform. And of course, once we've moved it, we will add it to the list, well, the, the hash set, rather, of moved passengers. So we can say move passengers.add hit.transform. All right, so now each passenger will only be moved one time per frame. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to Put my uh, moving platform down here. Make sure you set the passenger mask to player. And uh, let's set the move y velocity to 1. And put the player on top. And let's press play. All right, now since we don't have a camera that tracks our player yet, let us select the moving platform and press Shift F to track it in the scene view. And uh, let's increase the Y velocity to make sure that it doesn't sort of all fall apart at high speeds. And uh, let's maybe introduce a little bit of X movement. And everything still seems to be working very nicely. All right. Um, one thing to note, of course, is that if we have, say, an obstacle over here, um, our player is going to go right through it. And that's not the behavior we actually want. But um, that's because we're using transform.translate. And later on, we're going to swap that out for controller2d.move so that it constrains to collisions. But uh, just to keep things simple for now, um, we're just using transform.translate. OK, so let's consider the next case, which would be a horizontally moving platform. And this would be where uh, the passenger is actually being pushed from the side. Um, so we'll say if velocity.x is not equal to 0. And uh, once again, let's just save time by um, copying some of this relevant raycast stuff here. And paste it in. 
All right, and everything is fine as it is, except we want to change the collision mask to the passenger mask. Okay. Um, let's just copy this from our vertically moving platforms. Um, so this time, push Y is simply going to be equal to zero. Um, and as for push X, this will be the same thing that we had for push Y up here. Only, of course, we replace all the Y's with X's. So velocity dot X minus hit dot distance minus skin width multiplied by direction X. Okay, so that should actually be working already. Um, got a passing error. Uh, here we go. Parsing sorted. And let's put this to the side and set the move to say negative one on the x-axis and you can see it pushes us along nicely and the same thing should work as well for the other side let's just make sure it does I'll set this to 10 works nicely all right now there are two things that are still not working um, if I just press play again the one is with a horizontally moving platform if we stand on top of it you can see that we're not actually moved along with it and this is simply because it's not moving vertically, so we're not casting any vertical rays, and thus we're not detecting the fact that the player is standing on top of the platform. Um, the other is if we have the player standing on top of a downward moving platform. I set that to negative 5 on the y-axis and just press shift F so we're tracking. Um, you can see the, the player bounces. And the reason for this is, well, first of all, the moving platform is casting rays downward since that's the direction it's moving. So once again, it's not detecting the fact that the player is standing on top of it. And the reason for the actual bouncing is that our player is accelerating downward due to gravity. And whenever it catches up and collides with the platform, then the velocity on the y-axis resets. And then it accelerates and catches up again and the whole process repeats, hence the bouncing. All right, so the way we're going to deal with this is by going into our platform controller and uh, we're going to add one final case, which is if a passenger is on top of a um, of a horizontally or downward moving platform, then we want to cast a small ray up just to detect if there is any passenger standing sort of flush against the surface of the platform. So we'll say if uh, say direction y is equal to negative 1, so if the, if the platform is moving downward, or if velocity dot y is equal to 0 and velocity dot x is not equal to 0, in other words it's moving horizontally, then let's uh, copy all of this vertically moving platform code here since it's largely relevant, paste it in, and uh, now let's see, for the push x and the push y, this is going to be simply equal to velocity.x and velocity.y. Um, we always want the ray to be cast up, so uh, over here we're going to not multiply vector 2 dot up by direction y, we'll just delete that. For the same reason, we always want to start from raycast origin dot top left, so we can uh, delete this bit here. And uh, let's actually just make this all on one line now. Okay, and uh, finally for the ray length, we want this to simply be equal to skin width multiplied by 2. So one skin width to get to the surface uh, of the platform, and then another just to have a small ray uh, detecting anything standing on top. Okay, so that should be good. Let's save and try this again. And this time you can see that the player is sitting flushly on the, uh, on the platform. And we can jump. And that's all good. Um, let's test the other case that wasn't working earlier, which is a horizontally moving platform. This time, as you can see, it is working fine. Okay, so that's not all for uh, moving platforms. We still need to make our passengers constrained to collisions, 
But uh, that's quite enough for this episode, so we'll look at that in part seven. Until then, cheers.